a couple of weeks ago rise of kingdoms held an in-person event in south korea where the developers of the game revealed three new korean commanders that they were strongly considering implementing into rise of kingdoms and as i was doing research on these commanders this morning to make this video the official rise of kingdoms youtube channel released this video ottoman civilization cinematic the battle of osman and this is the thumbnail and as the title of the video suggests it is a live action cinematic cinematic about the battle of Osman against the Byzantine empire. And ladies and gentlemen, I think there is a strong possibility that we get finally a new prime commander in the form of Osman prime. So today we're going to go over all of that, including the new Korean commanders that could be coming to rise of kingdoms. So make sure you stay to the end and drop a like on the video. If you enjoy and appreciate breaking news for rise of kingdoms, but first what's going on guys. Cheers. Okay. First, let's talk about the battle of Osman cinematic that was posted on the official rise of kingdoms YouTube channel. The first thing that I'm going to do is come over here and drop a thumbs up on the video, which I assume you've already done for this video. And I don't want to go through and react to this entire video. Um, it's a really cool cinematic. There is a lot of really cool action. All right. And it basically portrays Osman the first in a battle against the Byzantine empire. And the video essentially tells the story of how Osman was kind of on the back foot, how it was unlikely that he was going to win this battle and that his generals were basically telling him uh, that they are completely outnumbered, that they should retreat. That way Osman is, you know, safe and he doesn't have to get captured or killed. And as you go through the cinematic, basically Osman says, nope, we're going to fight. And it's a super cool video. Okay. So kudos to rise of kingdoms for having this video done. Uh, you could see here that the Byzantine empire, the, the, they lose the battle. Okay. He's cowering like a absolute, a uh, loser basically. Okay. And Osman is victorious. Okay. It's a super cool cinematic. I'm going to link it down below. You guys should definitely check it out. But for me, I was curious, like, why would they be releasing a live action cinematic for the Ottoman Empire civilization? I mean, that's what it says here, that it is a cinematic for the civilization itself. And we already have the Ottoman Empire civilization. It's been in the game for years now. So why would they randomly go out of their way to pay these actors and pay a studio to film and storyboard and set up all of this with props and with editing and like there, there's so much work that goes into making a video like this even if you make the argument that it's like you know obviously this isn't like lord of the rings level budget okay there's no like massive cgi here in fact there's probably only like 12 actors in the entire thing right it's a great video don't get me wrong but you know like why would they go through all the effort to, to to do this right like what's the point they're not like advertising a new civilization well there's three things that came to mind okay the first thing that came to mind is that I don't know if you guys remember, but back in September, Rise of Kingdoms launched the Global Civilizations collab project. And this first came into the game with the collaboration with the, I'm sorry, I'm not going to try to pronounce this, but it was a history museum in China. And we also got an in-game city decoration for this event. That was the Tiger Tally decoration. And one thing that came to mind for me is that perhaps the next global civilization that they're collabing with is an attempt at preserving the ottoman empire's history okay and perhaps the cinematic was the first step to introducing the ottoman empire into this new global civilizations collab project i think that's completely possible the second thing that i thought of when we when i first saw the cinematic drop is that this is the next step in building hype for the graphical enhancement that is coming to rise of kingdoms over the next six or seven months i made a video about this on my channel already talking about what is rise of kingdoms 2 okay and we go over some footage here but for me it's possible that they're going to go through all the civilizations okay because all the civilization buildings and everything are going to probably be getting a facelift a new fresh coat of paint as is the entire game okay so perhaps it's the case that they're going to go through and have a cinematic for all the civilizations. I think that's kind of ambitious. I think that's, I mean, again, this is like this video probably took a lot of time and money to make. So for them to do this for over a dozen civilizations in the game at this point seems unlikely, but it's possible that it is a step in building hype for the sort of refresh of rise of kingdoms. And the final thing that I thought of was Osman prime. 
I think they could be about to celebrate the release of a, a commander that is beloved, a commander that people have been asking for for a long time. I think if when you think of prime commanders that deserve to be primes that aren't in the game yet, I think Sun Tzu is at the top of that list, but also Osman Prime. I think Osman is a slam dunk. Like he is, he has so much historical significance. He is an absolute badass. He is a giga Chad. Okay. And I think that a lot of people would love to see Osman Prime come into the game and perhaps they are leaning into that hype and building up the hype for the launch of a new Prime Commander that they know everybody is going to want and is going to love. And I was trying to find some more information as to why they might be doing this. And there's really no information in the description. It just says join Osman the first in a fierce battle against the Byzantine army as he strategizes for victory and protects the future Ottoman empire experience the power of loyalty and triumph in this new epic cinematic video. There's no indication here as to why they made the new epic cinematic video. Okay. But if you scroll down, you'll see a familiar face here, Baba TC Ataturk. He is the Baba from the game. He is one of the most, if not the most powerful player in the game with the highest kill points in the entire game. Okay. That, that number fluctuates depending on when you're watching this, but he says that he thinks finally Osman commander is coming. And people are like, wait a minute, uh, Baba, he's already in the game. And he says prime. Okay. He thinks that Osman prime is coming. And I completely agree. I think, you know, I mean, look, let me just be a little bit cynical here. Okay. I'm just going to be a, a little bit, this is a stretch perhaps. Um, but I think that Baba has been a cornerstone of the community for years now. He has, let's be honest, spent millions of dollars on the game. Okay. Let's like probably over a million at least at this point, like let's be real. Okay. And I don't think it would be that ridiculous for rise of kingdoms to just go to Baba and be like, look, Hey, what, like what prime commander do you want in the game? And he's just like, I want Osman prime and boom, there it is. I could see them literally just doing that. I could see them doing that. Now, maybe that's a stretch. Okay. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being a little bit ridiculous there. Okay. But look, I think we're getting Osman prime. I think there's, I mean, like we have, there's no great reason for this cinematic. And also like, why would they make a live action cinematic for the release of a prime commander? I don't really know the answer to that. Okay. I'm not really sure, but one thing is certain. And that is that they are building hype for the Ottoman empire civilization. Okay. There's, I mean, they would not go through all the effort to make this video otherwise. And I think one great way for them to do that would be to introduce Osman prime. So I think we're getting Osman prime. I don't know when he's going to come out. I don't know if he's going to be a cavalry commander. I don't know if he's going to be an infantry commander. Uh, it seems unlikely that he would be archers. And if we take any hints from this video, um, there's really not much to go off of. I think there's a lot of use of archery in the second half of the video. Perhaps he's going to be leadership. Perhaps he's going to be the next ranged commander. Okay. I think that would be a little bit disappointing because range has really fallen short. I would love to see a giga Chad leadership commander in the form of Osman prime. I think if we saw like if Osman prime is basically like Honda Tadakatsu 2.0, basically just Honda with more stats. I think that would be sick. Just a basically a really powerful leadership commander that you can throw in as secondary to basically anybody and just pop off. I think that would be awesome. I would love to see that. So I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below. Do you think we're going to be getting Osman prime? And if so, what troop type do you think he's going to be? Also one last thing about Osman prime. I noticed when I was doing a research for this video that the Google play store in Turkey was actually updated to include an image of Osman fighting on this battlefield. Now, typically there is an alternative version of this image where I believe we have Mulan in this, a similar pose, just like this. And if you come to the rise of kingdoms website for Turkey, where you can actually download the game, you'll see sort of like a, an animated version of that image with the shining Osman letters with a sort of Osman right here. And this is basically being used in Turkey to promote rise of kingdoms, right? So I don't know when the Google play store was updated with this graphic or when Lilith actually updated their website. Of course they do a lot of localized marketing for the game. So it could be the case that this was updated with this imagery a while ago for the Turkish website or for the Google play store. But if it was recent, which this is the first time that I'm ever seeing this image. And as a content creator for rise of kingdoms, I've seen 
tons of marketing material for the game and typically i see it pretty quickly when it comes out because i'm all over the place for those of you that have seen me like i'm i'm in comments of random rock youtubers videos like I, i'm everywhere okay so it's you know it's possible that this could have happened a long time ago but it's also possible that like this is another big push to market Osman. It's also worth noting that this web page promotes the rock command promo code, which I do know came out, uh, I think like maybe a week or two ago. So it's possible that, you know, this is a, a couple of weeks old, but regardless, I think this is more evidence to show that they are putting a little bit more emphasis on Osman these days, which perhaps means we could be getting a prime next let's talk about the new Korean commanders that I hinted at earlier in the video and this I want to give a huge shout out to Ihara we have covered their channel before here on my channel and I've given plenty of shout outs to them before so if you haven't subscribed to Ihara's YouTube channel yet there will be a link in the description below I highly recommend that you check them out because they're very very reliable when it comes to getting information in other languages translated and brought to us with English captions so they already have 25,000 subs so you know they're a great channel and great resource for rise of kingdoms content they've made two videos at this point talking about new Korean commanders coming to rise of kingdoms and again this information comes from an in-person event that happened in South Korea now if we take a look at the beginning of this video you'll see that ihara basically says that after the in-person event happened rise of kingdoms basically released the in-person q a session in the form of this uh graphic okay and that's kind of what ihara goes through in this video now i don't have the link to that actual infographic so if you do i would love to know where it came from i couldn't find it on the rock forums or anything like that possibly it was posted in like a a, a korean social media channel or something like that i'm not really sure but basically um one of the questions that the korean players asked was when are we going to be getting new korean commanders in rise of kingdoms because realistically the most recent korean commander that we saw come into the game was shook right and that is like a fourth generation infantry commander he obviously is pretty garbage pretty much nobody ever uses him before that we got isun sin which obviously is very powerful and before that we had you know ysg who is basically you know out of all of them ysg is the only usable korean commander in the open field i think like sure you can use chuck but he's really not being used and i think that says a lot people do use ysg he's amazing but you know the korean players are kind of like hey like you know we're there's lots of chinese commanders in the game there's lots of you know recently we've had a lot of love for greek commanders and things like that so where are the korean commanders and i think that is that is a perfectly good question to ask and the official developers basically revealed three commanders that they are strongly considering implementing into the game now you might be sitting there thinking okay omniarch well they're just considering adding these it's not confirmed and that's true but let me remind you that sargon was revealed in this way and juge leong was also revealed in this way if you guys don't remember it was basically like probably at this point a year ago or something uh, they did an in-person event just like this where they revealed that they were considering implementing sargon and juge leong and then a few months later we got sargon and a few months after that we got juge leong so it it they basically released them shortly after revealing it in this in-person event and and I think that that sets a precedent that if they're willing to even name drop the commander on an in-person, you know, stage, then it's highly likely that we're going to be getting at least one of these three commanders. So who are these three commanders? Well, the first one is Sejong the Great. And I just want to preface all this by saying, I do apologize if I mispronounce these names. Obviously, I'm I have very little knowledge as to pronounce anything in you know in fluent Korean. All right. But the first one, and I think this is the most likely to come to the game, is Sejong the Great. This gentleman was a king in Korea. He was the fourth ruler of the Joseon dynasty. Again, I, I, I do apologize. Okay. He was the inventor of Hangul, which I don't know what that is. This is a uh, it looks like a writing system okay cool and also the native alphabet of the korean language today he is regarded as one of the greatest leaders in korean history he's also on their printed money okay so like he is one of the most influential and well loved i guess i'm i'm not trying to speak on the behalf of the koreans i don't know how the koreans feel about this guy but i would assume that uh they they tend to have a favorable opinion on this dude which i think you know if rise of kingdoms was going to implement anybody i think that this is a very safe 
bet also he's already in civilization six okay and there is a lot of overlap with the commanders that are in civ six and in rise of kingdoms and i think that's because both of these games try their hardest to implement commanders and historical generals and leaders that the communities of those countries actually like okay and that are actually impactful and meaningful and are influential enough to actually be in the game so if this gentleman sejong is in civ 6 i think it's reasonable to assume that rise of kingdoms would consider adding him to their game as well of the three commanders we're going to talk about today for korea this is the only one in civ 6 and i think that that says a lot okay another one of the commanders that was mentioned here as possibly going to be implemented into the game is cho young or choi young i don't know if i pronounced that correctly but this was a korean general born during the goryeo period and he became a national hero after he put down the jo ishin rebellion again don't know if i said that right but also in his final years he was betrayed and executed by his former subordinate Lee song ye so this dude literally basically trained Lee song ye in real life okay uh, and Lee song is already in the game so i think there's already some precedent uh for e song ye's teacher basically to be put into rise of kingdoms okay we see huo shibing and we see liu che we see them in the game okay and they have a similar sort of relationship okay and i'm no history expert so please don't destroy me in the comment section below if that's like not close at all but i think there's some precedent here to having him put into the game because Lee sung ye is already in rise of kingdoms and the final person that they mentioned as possibly coming to rise of kingdoms was kim yu sin now let me just say up front that if they implement this commander let's just let's just stop for a minute okay when we talk about Lee song ye we say ysg when we talk about Lee soon sin we say yss and if we talk about this guy it would be kys which stands for kill yourself do i have to really say that it's a joke it's 2023 i feel like i do i don't want to be canceled on twitter okay there's nothing funny about kys but like like you know what i'm saying you know anyway jokes aside he was a korean military general and politician in the seventh century Silla. see ya he led the unification of the Korean Peninsula under the reign of King Mu Yul and King Mun Mu. He is said to have been the great grandchild of King something. I sorry, the last ruler. Okay, this would have been okay. See, whew, man, that was that's a lot. I can't do all that. But uh, basically, this was a very influential military general um he helped unify korea so like that's kind of a big deal all right uh now of these three i think it, i think we've covered them in order of probability i think sejong is the most likely to come to rise of kingdoms Choi young is the second most likely to come to the game in my opinion because of ysg and kim un sin is third now it's possible that all three of these korean commanders come into the game and essentially rise of kingdoms just hinted at the next three commanders coming right like they could release one korean commander per year over the next three years and these are the three in that order right that could possibly be what happens they could use none of these i think that's also possible as well unlikely i think eventually we will see at least one of these three come to the game and what i want to know is which of the three do you want to see come to rise of kingdoms do you want sejong do you want Choi Young or do you want KYS okay now the last thing I want to cover in this video is a recent developer feedback that was released officially by rise of kingdoms I think that this is a pretty good place to put it on the channel okay I want to cover this but it's not really worthy of a dedicated video the first thing is a suggestion quality of life improvements to garrison and rallying make it possible to lock unit types for rallies and garrisons preventing t1 through three troops from joining and allow rally garrison captains to set a maximum joining time to prevent unnecessary reinforcements the devs response is that they will add a notification okay great currently we are not considering this due to the complexity of battle mechanics unfortunate our team will consider implementing a mechanism that locks the rally but please understand that our team will internally discuss possible solutions as the rally management interface is already quite complex and i do agree with that i think a lot of people you know especially those that, that watch my channel or any rise of kingdoms on youtube in general i think we are very dedicated players to the game and so for us it's obviously not that complex but for a brand new player it is and i think that they would want to avoid that allow r4 r5 to return troops from structures prior to kvk Thank you for your input our team will review this suggestion as it was initially designed to maintain the social aspect of the original kingdom okay interesting suggestion reduce the resource assistance tax rate to five percent instead of eight percent 
Thank you for suggesting the resource assistance tax rate is one of the major mechanics to deter illicit resource trading this is not under consideration at any moment okay so they are not going to make it cheaper to send resources unfortunately equality for garrisons and rally leads if a rally can survive with the rally leader having one troop a garrison should survive if the garrison march has only one troop currently we do not plan to change this as it would significantly impact the balance of attack and defense dy dynamics in the gameplay style this might be an unpopular opinion but i feel like we already see like 40 million fortresses in kvk so if garrisons were even stronger than they are now like bruh bruh oof okay next suggestion extend the time gaps in between commanders funny that we talk about it in this video Thank you for your suggestion. The current commander deployment intervals are relatively fixed and there are no plans to adjust them at this time. And this is something that I mentioned when uh, they, they first revealed Liu Che. A lot of people were like, oh my God, the commanders are coming out too fast, but like they're not. They're actually coming out, they, they're coming out at the same rate that they have come out for a very long time. I think one thing that confused players was that they dropped Pyrus in between cycles and people are like oh that's a legendary commander but it's not really right it's not a season of conquest you know meta i mean he might he's not meta viable right he might be usable in season of conquest and that's debatable right depending on how you want to pair him and if you have him expertise but he's not really part of the release cycle the release cycle there were 56 days between the release of huo and the release of liu che into rise of kingdoms now we started talking about liu che relatively early because he came into the game technically slightly early than most commanders would because of the five-year anniversary for rise of kingdoms but again like that doesn't really count i don't think and that's not like a precedent it's not like they're always going to be releasing the new commander a few weeks early because of some celebration it's that's like a one-time thing it's one and done right so needless to say 56 days is a pretty consistent release schedule for these commanders do i want to see it extended i think we could use maybe a two-week extension right i think if you added maybe 14 days to that okay instead of 56 it was 70. i think that's fair i think that's reasonable that's like you know about two months every other month you know we get a new commander something like that i think that's fine but that's just me it looks like that it's not going to change and it hasn't changed for a while so nothing to really uh, be concerned about there give us a way to completely remove rogues from our kingdom banishing isn't nearly enough thank you for your suggestion we will carefully examine ways to address the situation as it may have a significant impact on more governors governors are encouraged to provide more suggestions to find an ideal solution i agree with this i think that you know having some trolls in your kingdom is just annoying it's it's i know like as if you're a troll watching like i know it's fun right um but should your fun take priority over the fun of multiple other people right if if one person can ruin the experience for many others then that action should be something that the developer should take seriously and you know consider removing from the game because one troll could cause people to quit right and that's just not good for the game if you extrapolate that logic out across a long period of time right so there you go adding a crystal cost for fort drops in lost kingdom this should help alleviate concerns regarding the constant rise of forts and current trench warfare dynamics thank you for your feedback our team will explore alternative ways to limit the stacking of forts so basically they're saying okay we're not going to have it cost crystals but they are exploring at least ways to limit stacking forts and I think that this is really good I think I would like to see this right I know some people some people believe it or not like the fort meta but I I would like to see this I think there's too many forts in the game and you basically need to be in a kingdom with multiple shell alliances that all have max uh, alliance tech like it's kind of ridiculous that that is currently the meta because a lot of kingdoms don't have the like players to do that you don't have enough people to have tons of shell alliances with max tech right so it's just not really that fair in my opinion and also it's boring like it takes so long to burn Ford's brother oh my god it's ridiculous it's literally not fun so yes having them change this I think would be great alliances who have completed technology should allow donations to be made directly to the alliance or turn off the red marker when no available technology exists for donating Thank you. We understand this is part of the social aspect of the game. We suggest that governors communicate with their alliance leaders to make better use of alliance skills. This I agree with. I think in the grand scheme of things, this is kind of a, a non-issue. Like it is kind of annoying when you need to donate and you can't, um, or you've maxed out your your donations. You're you're sitting at 20 stacked and there's nothing you can do. Especially if you uh, have a bastion quest that says donate five times to your alliance and there's nothing to donate to. Like that kind of sucks. But in the grand scheme of things, this isn't that big of a deal. It is what it is and you know the alliance that i'm in at least they're usually very good at timing the use of the skills so that way there's always at least one up ready to be donated to 
and i think that if your alliance isn't doing that then they should be doing that so you should tell them add newer commanders to the hearts desire event thank you our team will discuss and study your suggestions internally so possibly possibly and i think i don't really even care about this event to be honest um i think it's they you know maybe if they did add new commanders i would care but to me it is what it is anyway guys that's gonna do it for this video if you made it all the way to the end of the video i hope you'll have already dropped a thumbs up on it because it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and breaking news like this and also comment down below which of the three korean commanders that we revealed today are you hoping that we see or do you think is most likely to come to the game and what do you think about osman prime i think there is pretty strong evidence to suggest that we might be getting osman prime especially because at the time of recording this it has been 404 days since the last release of a prime commander 404 days since the last release that is unbelievable it's been over a well over a year since the last prime commander we're long overdue and i think all signs point to osman being the next one what do you guys think in the comment section below guys and with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace